Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Sunday morning mountain weather update. I want to go to where the action is right now. This is our main storm system, the one that is poised to move into the Intermountain West over the coming few days. And this is Whistler Blackholm. Snow is coming down up there. Gives you an idea of what we're dealing with with this storm system. Great to see that up there at uh, Whistler. Here is radar out of the Pacific Northwest. And you can see it. This is all part of that leading edge with that storm system. You've got snow falling up in the, uh, the high cascades, some of the high volcanoes of Washington, and of course up along the coastal range there through Whistler and beyond up into parts of BC. And that snow is likely headed through the interior and we'll see snow accumulation through the interior uh, mountains, the high mountains of uh, BC. So again, that's our main storm system. Let me give you the lay of the land here. So this is our water vapor satellite imagery and oranges and reds are gonna be your drier air aloft. The key here is all the moisture and the whites and the blues and there's our area of low pressure that that leading edge of precip is just uh, it's slamming into bc right now and this is the same storm it's got jet support the whole thing is going to roll down into the inner mountain west and then kind of take a track through southern uh wyoming northern colorado and then roll out but that uh, the key time frame for the inner mountain is roughly 10 28 through 10 30. so that's a storm system on the way there are additional storm systems behind it with a nice jet flow, but this one's the main storm system that I see. And there's a total of three. That takes me into my bullet points for this morning. So still looking at a total of three different storm systems, but I still think the first one is, uh, it has the most juice with it. The second one's a little bit weaker, and I'll show you that. The third one is looking a little bit more interesting here in this update versus yesterday. So here are the key time frames for best snow accumulation potential in the Wasatch late 1028 through all of 1029 and then again 11 to 11 3. In the Tetons it's 1029 and then again late 1031 11 1 third storm 11 3. Colorado 1029 10 30 another storm system for 11 3 11 4. So that just gives you uh, some time frame. I want to show you some comparisons for Colorado. Here's the time height forecast, humidity in the atmosphere, all the vertical layers for Telluride ski area in southwest Colorado. Timeline's at the bottom. You read it from right to left. So roughly for the next 72 hours, um, you can see we're very dry for the rest of this weekend. And then once we get into late 1028, 1029, 1030, all the green, there's a flux of green. It takes over the atmosphere it, all the way from basically mountaintop to jet stream there's there's a high moisture value here a lot of transport up over the high peaks so we're flush with moisture over telluride and we're going to see a lot of moisture but look at the comparison so there's telluride here's winter park you see the difference there's less humidity less moisture less lift happening over the top of winter park um, let me take you back one more you can see the contrast so there's telluride and there's winter park so that immediately tells me that the aura graphics are not as strong uh, over Winter Park, the Front Range High Peaks, versus a lot of Southwest Colorado. Still going to be snow in both locations, but I just don't see the big amounts over Winter Park, A Basin, Loveland, Longs Peak, Keystone, whereas I see bigger amounts down in Southwest Colorado. Let me take you up to Wyoming and show you what Jackson's looking like here for the next 10 to 15 days worth of snow. You can see the plume sort of goes up uh, after 1028. That's when we see um, two, maybe even three storm systems affecting the Tetons. Um, and that's Jackson. We're going to see more snow than that higher up on the mountains, you know, up at Rendezvous, Cody Peak, the Grand Teton. All right, let me just to show you the jet stream. So by close of business today, you can see the big trough. That's our main storm system in the Pacific Northwest. By the time we get into Monday, it's already digging south. Um, and then here it comes. It kind of brushes the Sierra with very light snow on its way through. But then it's, it's, it's maturing here in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Colorado through 1029. That's a key day. Then it moves out of Colorado on 1030, late on 1030. It would linger on 1030 um, in Colorado. And that's not it. You can already see the next dip in the jet behind that. So that would be storm number two. And that one focuses on the northern tier and kind of rolls through. Here comes the third storm system. Look at the dip in the jet. This one's going to come down to the south out of the Pacific Northwest. 
and then there it is. It starts to dig through Nevada all the way down to Vegas, um, into Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado. Um, here we go. Let me push it ahead one more time frame. And look at it dig even further to the south into the four corners by 11.3. That's why I said of the three storm systems, the third one is looking more interesting here this morning because it has a more pronounced dig and the more more jet support further to the south. The trough is deeper. Then it rolls through New Mexico and Colorado and beyond. And that might not be it. There could be one sneaky fourth storm system behind that. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But let me just show you the forecast radar and satellite. So by 5.30 this afternoon, Rain, snow continues in the Pacific Northwest, snow in the mountains, B.C. and beyond. All right, here we go on Monday morning. Here comes the storm moving to the south in the form of a cold front. Snow in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, beginning to, a little bit sliding through the Sierra. Then it begins to develop into parts of Utah. And watch the flow over southwest Colorado intensify right there in the 1029. This is in the morning. You've got snow over the Tetons, Wind Rivers, Big Sky, Utah, all the way down to uh, Brian Head and uh, the snow intensifying over the top of southwest Colorado. Um, that's that high humidity that I showed you on that time slice. And then uh, the storm matures here. This is 1029 in the afternoon. The storm track today is kind of looking like it did last uh, yesterday when I did this update. It's really favoring the heaviest snow production or the storm track through a lot of Wyoming, but there's still going to be plenty of wraparound and orographic snow over the top of Colorado, just not as much for Denver. Um, it kind of looks like yesterday with a rain snow mix for Denver coming in, but here we go. And there it is on the backside. If it is, if it does happen in Denver, it's very brief. Temperatures will fall, but the snow is mainly confined to the high mountains of Colorado and a lot of Wyoming. And then the storm moves out by afternoon 1030 and by 1031, here comes the next storm. And that one focuses on the northern tier, Idaho, Montana, BC, Wyoming, kind of brushes, potentially brushes northern Utah. And then it just fades before it even reaches Colorado. Here comes the third storm system. Look how much further south it goes. So you've got snow production over parts of uh, Utah, a little bit over the Tetons, and then it's beginning to develop over Colorado. This is 11.3 in the morning. Look at this. Storm matures, and this is why it's a little more interesting today. Um, this is a stronger storm potentially for 11.4 over Colorado as the low spins up over southeast Colorado we tend to get that uh, that ore graphic flow over the top and that easterly wind driving some some good production a precip over the top of Denver the foot the foothills and then of course the high mountains so this is one to watch for 11.4 and that storm still going and moves away by 11.5 and then look at the final frame here this is why I said there might be a sneaky fourth storm look at the energy diving south out of Canada into the northern tier on 11.5 all right, let's talk snow. Here are my numbers for um, all of today through the 29th. Um, so this basically is our first storm system. Um, so looking at anywhere from 6 to 12 inches across the Wasatch, the High Uintas, a little bit less now today over the, uh, the Tetons, maybe 2 to 4, but potentially 3 to 6 over the Wind Rivers. In Colorado, um, a lot of the snow is south of I-70 into the San Juans where we could see 6 to 12 inches, maybe 1 to 4 over the top of A Basin, Loveland, Berthoud Pass, Winter Park, up to Longs Peak, um, and then obviously some snow into BC. All right, here's the main time period. Uh, 1030 through 11.5, this is the combination of two additional storm systems. Um, really good numbers over Colorado if that storm on 11.4 truly does develop um, we could be looking at six to twelve inches widespread even snow down into denver with that one if that uh, that actually happens snow in northern new mexico maybe another three to six there through parts of the wasatch and potentially a bigger snow for the tetons out of this second time period of six to ten inches um, some good numbers up in the Pacific Northwest, BC, anywhere in purple here on this map is a foot or more. And just some light snow accumulation for the Sierra. Um, again, just, you're kind of just out of the storm, just, just slightly out of the storm track with this, with everything sort of going to your north. Um, but there you go. I mean, that's, that's, our, uh, that's the way it looks through 11.5. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this Sunday morning mountain weather update. I'll take you back in time here. Again, there's your first time frame, 1027 to 1029. And then here is your second time frame, 1030 through 11.5. Take care and have a great day.